Good, good. How are you and your family doing, Mark? Uh, let's just say I'm trying to get out of the house as much as I can. Uh-oh. <laughs> I will go to the grocery store.
Well, good evening. I would like to call to order the Zoning Board of Adjustments meeting for July 2020. It is 6.03 p.m. And the first order of business for consideration and possible action is approval of minutes for our June 2020 meeting. Is there a motion on the floor to approve the minutes from June 2020? Mr. Chairman, uh, yeah. prior, prior to the approval, can I ask a, uh, if it's possible to make a change to, uh, to reflect that I was absent from the meeting and voluntarily due to technology issues as, as the minutes stand, it just says I'm not there and um, I wouldn't want that to be counted against me if I've gotten to miss several other meetings this year for some strange reason. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor to make a change to add that Gary was absent due to technical difficulty. Is that okay to place in the motion and approve it? Uh, I yeah, uh, what I would recommend is to say uh, to approve the minutes um, with the correction of adding that Mr. Shrum did not attend due to technical difficulties or was not able to attend to technical difficulty. Right. Somebody says so moved. We've got it. I I, uh, I have one one correction to make. Okay. Well, then let's uh, put both of these in it. Got it. And item number eight, the last sentence, the second to last sentence, uh, it should read uh, with the condition of the fire marshal and engineering department approval. Um, the fire marshal and engineering department. Engineering department's approval. This is this is Teresa Del Valle. Because there are more than one change um, to the minutes, should we have those changes made and then resubmit them for consideration at the next meeting, so that the record will show um, the full minutes being approved? I think that that'd be a quick and easy thing for us to do, and I, I appreciate the suggestion. Martin, do you have what you need to make those revisions? Uh, and then we'll put it on the August meeting. Do you have uh, what I need? And I can take care of that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we're going to pass on item number two. So we're going to pass on item number two. We'd like to move into new business now. We're going to move into ZBA application number 200007 for a variance enclosure of an encroaching patio structure for a sunroom. This is a request by John and Sheila Greenwalt, applicants and owners for a variance as permitted by the Unified Development Code Ordinance Number 2000-T to allow the enclosure of a 13 by 14 foot patio, which extends more than the maximum 50%. 10 inches, 10 feet into the required rear yard setback in the R2 district to accommodate a sunroom. General location is 4003 Spring Forest Drive, Caroline, Texas. We'd like to move to the next report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, good. I'm getting a lot of feedback. Um, can we please mute our mic? Thank you. Um, good evening, Mr. Chair and members of the ZBA. My name is Florence Buatu, and I'm a planner with uh, the Community Development Department. This request is to allow an enclosure of a 13 by 13 feet by 14 feet patio structure. And this is an existing structure, but it's, it's an uncompleted existing structure. The structure extends more than 50% um, into the required year setback. 
The variance request is from section 2.6.1.1 of the Unified Development Code, which requires that any patio, any covered patio extension uh, into the rear setback extend not more than 50% into the required rear setback. And um, this is for any covered patio that is sharing the roof line of the main structure and is not fully enclosed. And also providing that it's not encroaching into any easement. And so the structure we are going to look at extends more than 50% into the required um, setback, encroaches into uh, the utility easement, and is being proposed to be enclosed. And so that is the reason for the variance. The location is at 4003 Spring Forest Drive, Pearland, Texas, and the applicant intends to enclose the structure to be used as a sunroom. The property is zoned single family residential too. Um, included in your packet is a signed petition uh, from property owners within 200 square feet of the uh, subject property. And so that is included in your packet, but we also received two written responses from property owners within 200 feet of the subject property in support of this application. Just to give you a little background about this application, the principal structure or the residential building on the property was built in 1990. Um, in 2009, the applicants contracted, according to the applicants, they contracted a, a general contractor to construct a sunroom addition to their existing home. Um, halfway through the construction, they found out that uh, permits were not pulled for the uh, structure. And then they also found out that the structure was encroaching into the rear setback as well as the utility easement. And so in November 2019, um, they requested for a variance from the ZBA for a six foot 11 inch uh, rear setback in lieu of the required 20 foot setback. At the time of that variance, the structure was being classified as an extension of the existing building. And so um, the ZBA denied the barrier, uh, zero to four. After that, the applicants uh, went in and obtained encroachment easement agreements with the utility companies that had their utilities running through the um, eight foot, the eight foot utility easement in the rear of the uh, property. And they did receive approval for that encroachment agreement, which allows them to keep the existing structure. Since then, staff has also changed the classification of the existing structure from an extension of the existing building to a, a covered patio because in August 2019, there was an amendment to the UDC which allowed covered patios that shared the roof line of the main building and uh, were not fully enclosed to encroach 50% into the required VSS. And so just looking at the existing structure being uh, not fully enclosed and sharing the roof line of the main structure, staff decided to reclassify the structure as a, a covered patio. Moving forward, this, track, uh, this property is, it has a, an underlying land use of medium density residential. It's located in um, the Spring Forest um, subdivision. As I said earlier, it has an underlying zoning of single family residential. This is a view of the, um, the existing layout of the lot that was before they put in the um, managed patio structure. And so you see the wooden 
deck. You see the eight foot utility easement and the main building on the left. So here we see the addition of the uh, patio, covered patio structure, which encroaches 13 inches into the eight foot utility easement. And uh, to the right is a more zoomed out image of the patio, covered patio addition. And so just to uh, help us understand um, this request better, um, I have a diagrammatic layout of the site just to make it clearer. And so what you see in brown is the uh, patio structure addition, and the gray is the main structure. The shaded portion on the rear of the property is the eight foot utility easement. So zooming in a little more into the site, um, I wanted to clearly demonstrate the requirement of the UDC that uh, a covered patio can only extend a maximum of 50% into the required rear setback. And so you see the eight foot utility easement is clear with no building encroaching into it. And then the maximum, the brown shows the maximum that the uh, covered patio can encroach into the rear setback. And so what we have on the right-hand side is the existing situation um, of the subject property. You see a 13-foot uh, covered patio addition shown in brown, uh, which encroaches 13 inches into the uh, utility easement. And this is roughly 65% of the required year setback. And so for the first part of this variance, the applicant is requesting for a 65% um, extension of the patio structure into the required year setback in lieu of the required 50% or the permitted 50% by the Unified Development Code. Um, the structure is also encroaching into the eight foot utility easement which the applicant has taken care of with the encroachment agreement with the utility companies uh, that own that easement. The second part of this variance request is uh, a variance to the enclosure requirement. And so the UDC clearly states that uh, a covered patio cannot be fully enclosed. And the applicant is planning or proposing to use this as a sun room and is therefore requesting a variance from that um, requirement by the UDC to be able to enclose the existing covered patio with glass windows and doors. So that is the, um, the variance is basically in two parts. One for um, a 65% extension into the rear set back in lieu of the 50%. And the second part is for uh, enclosure of the existing structure to be used as a stand room. I did include a few images of the unfinished stand room or what we are now classifying as the covered patio structure. So you can see some walls and openings, which would be the place for the glass windows and doors. This shows the connection to the main uh, structure. And, and also you see the um, proximity of the structure to the property behind it and in the utility easement. Just to go over the key issue, um, the addition has been partially constructed as we saw in the images. Um, the existing structure is being classified as a patio uh, cover. It extends 65% into the required year setback in lieu of the 50% permitted by the Unified Development Code. It encroaches into the aid for utility easement 
but the applicants have taken care of that by obtaining encroachment agreements from the easement holders. And basically, the applicants are requesting to keep the existing structure as is and enclose it, um, enclose the existing patio structure. So staff has reviewed um, this request based on the criteria outlined in the Unified Development Code. And as you can see, it does not meet a lot of the established criteria. It's not a physical hardship um, that is unique to the property or arising from the physical surrounding or shape of the property. Um, however, staff has noted that um, it will not be detrimental to public health um, or safety in the area, and it, it is not going to have any impact on the orderly use or enjoyment of other properties within uh, the subdivision. So, based on the uh, fact that the, the request does not meet Conditions one, two, three, six, and seven of the approval uh, cri criteria. Uh, we don't really have any recommendations here, specifically because, um, on the other hand, we have uh, seen that first of all, this is an existing structure, and secondly, the applicants have demonstrated a willingness to remedy the situation. A good example is being able to obtain those encroachment agreements from the easement of, uh, holders of the utility easement on, in the rear of the property. But um, staff is recommending that if this um, request is approved, it should be approved with the following conditions. And it's on the next page. Uh, one, that the sun room can only be used as approved and cannot at any point in time be converted into living space or a more intense use. That two, the sun room cannot be fitted with any plumbing for heating or air conditioning. And this is basically because the uh, International Building Code recognizes a living space as a space that has heating. And so to prevent the future conversion of this sun room, into an additional living space in the, um, in the, on the property staff is trying to prevent this by uh, making sure that it is not, the space is not fitted with any plumbing for heating or air conditioning. And then uh, the third request is also that the sun room shall be substantially transparent and that is, it shall have at least 50% uh, openness or um, glass on every facade exposed to the outdoors. And this is to ensure that even though it will not be um, physically open to the outside, at least visually it will be open to the outside as um, envisioned in the Unified Development Code. And that concludes staff report. Thank you. Thank you, Florence. Do we have any, do we have an applicant presentation at this time? Don or Sheila Greenwalk present, want to speak? Kathleen, oh, there you go, thanks. Okay, uh, can you hear me now? Sir. Okay. Yes. 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 This is your this is your opportunity to um, have a applicant presentation, if you would like, sir. Yes, sir. We've done everything that uh, the city's asked us to do. Uh, whatever you can provide for us, we'd certainly appreciate. Right. And we really appreciate that we're able to come before the board again about this issue. Thank you very much. Do we have any? Persons wishing to speak for or against proposed request. Uh, Kathleen and Martin, I didn't get a list of anybody who had signed up. Uh, do either of you know if anybody had signed up to speak at this meeting? 
Uh, usually the city secretary's office would have forwarded any uh, public speaker request to me and I did not receive any. Okay, thank you. Now we can move into staff, board, and applicant discussion. Board, do we have any questions for the staff or the applicant at this time? This is Teresa Del Valle. I have a question for the staff. My question is, um, other than perhaps obtaining some type of agreements with the utility um, entities regarding the easement, is there anything else that is substantially different between this application today and the one that was denied November of 2019? Um, I think at this point, the most significant thing is the reclassification of the existing structure. Because when we came before the board in November 2019, this was classified as an extension of the um, principal structure or the main building on the lot. And so the extension was required to meet the 20-foot um, rear setback. And they were requesting for 6-foot 11. So at that point, the request they were making was also more than 50% of um, the UDC requirement. And so that was one of the major issues that came up in that hearing. The other issue was also, of course, the encroachment into the utility easement, which they have at least tried to address. Thank you. My, my other question is, um, as it pertains to the screen that lists what exceptions were met and were not met with the red no's and the green yeses, um, were there the same have these eight uh, criteria changed as far as them meeting some now that they did not meet before? Um, no, it hasn't changed from um, the last hearing. If I'm understanding you correctly, um, as far as meeting exceptions uh, 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 for the variances, it's basically the same now as it was before November 2019. Uh, yes. I, I'm not positive, but I would think that number eight may have been changed. Uh, Florence or Martin, do you know? I, I was, you beat me to it by just a couple seconds. Uh, number eight has changed. I, I have on my other screen uh, the previous PowerPoint. Uh, so, the degree of variance requested is the minimum necessary to meet the needs of the applicant and to satisfy the standards of this section. And, and then finally, the photographs that were presented today, uh, is that how the property appears today? Or because those photographs seem to be the same that as the ones that we considered in November of 2019? Uh, I believe they are the same. Um, Florence, if you'll pipe in on whether or not a uh, new. Uh, the, the photographs are basically the same ones we've had in 2019. Thank you. That's all the questions I have. Any other questions the staff, I mean, the board has for staff or applicant? Mark, <clears throat> this is Mark. Um, I have a question, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Greenwald, if I may. As, as part of the staff report, there were three conditions that staff came up with that were um, wanted to impose if we are approving this variance request. Are you familiar with those three conditions, Mr. and Mrs. Greenwald? Yes, sir, we are. Are there any of those conditions that you would not be able to meet or would object to? No, sir, not at all. So if if the variance request were changed to include those three conditions recommended by staff, you would be okay with that, so to speak? Yes, sir, correct. 
Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I'll tell you, I think you've also done a great job of trying to work with the city and uh, try to resolve a very complex and difficult issue. I'm going to support you in this issue. Thank you. Audie, any other questions, comments? Um, yes. Sorry about that. Um, I did have a question for the staff. Um, the the amendment that was passed that changes the the uh, area or the room we're talking about. Um, what 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 are the requirements under the new amendments for that space? Okay, so uh, for the new amendment, there are three requirements. One is that um, a patio cover now can extend into the required rear setback for 50% of the required um, rear setback. So if it's a 20 foot uh, required rear setback, you can have a, cut, a patio cover that extends 10 feet maximum into the required year setback. The second condition is that it would have to be not fully enclosed, not fully enclosed. And then the third condition is um, that it cannot extend into any utility easement on the site. And so if you happen to have a utility easement that was more than 50% of the required year setback, you cannot have your uh, structure Encroaching into that utility easement. And what yeah. another question for you? What what type of utilities do we have in a patio space? Within the space itself. Yes. I think a lot of that would depend on the applicant. Um, typically, if it's an unenclosed patio, it would basically be your um, electricity connections for lighting and maybe uh, a fan. But I do, and if you are going to put in um, an outdoor kitchen, of course, there will be plumbing for water. But apart from that, um, I can't think of any other utilities that would be present within um, a covered patio space. Uh, can I can I ask more questions uh, under the conditions to approve the variance? You, you note that the the sides need to be fifty percent transparent. What does what does that mean? Does that mean open or, or glass? Um, when uh, we were um, coming up with these conditions, I think um, one of the questions was what is the uh, or what was the intent of the UDC for. Um, requiring that a patio not be fully enclosed. And one of the intents that uh, we came up with was the fact that it was to prevent an enclosure, a future enclosure of the patio structure to be used as living space. And so that would be one of, I think, the important uh, reasons why the UDC would um, require that it not be fully enclosed. And, and so leaving it at least 50% or more than 50% um, transparent kind of meets the intent of leaving it enclosed. Uh, first of all, because the UDC wasn't very specific about whether this is a, a visual enclosure or a physical enclosure. Uh, if it's an open patio, of course, it's a physical enclosure, but leaving it as open as possible without plumbing makes it more difficult for it to be converted into living space in future. The, 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 the glass windows are, are technically a wall, aren't they not? Can you say that again, please? The glass windows are technically a wall. They, they are technically a wall. And that's why in addition to the glass windows, we are uh, recommending that um, plumbing or heating cannot be, uh, plumbing for heating or air conditioning cannot be put 
with VIP, which makes it um, technically, according to the International Building Pool, not a livable state. Okay, thank you very much. I have one question for the staff. If this was simply a covered patio, does it meet all three requirements? No, it does not. Uh, first of all, it extends more than 50% into the required year setback. It actually extends 65% into the required year setback, so it does not meet that requirement. Um, and then it also encroaches into the utility easement, which um, in South view has been taken care of with the encroachment agreement. And then it's uh, going to be fully enclosed, and so it does not meet the requirement of not being fully enclosed. But that is if they add on um, the glass windows and all. Thank you. Excuse me if I interrupt. Uh, this is Lawrence with the legal department. I just wanted to suggest that before we move on to the next item in the agenda, um, because we're unsure how the ZBA is feeling with this based on the questions. We've only heard one person suggesting what their vote was going to be on this item. I would recommend having some discussion about what y'all want this to be or how you're going to shape it before we get to the motion section uh, so that you don't risk having a motion, the motion failing for lack of a second or being denied and not having a clear indication of where you wanted this to go. So. Now would be the time in the discussion to express your views about the conditions uh, or about the application altogether uh, so that whenever somebody formulates a motion, uh, we have an idea of what type of motion to formulate. So from my standpoint of view, um, I like what has been presented by the staff. I think that the with the conditions that the staff has placed on the applicant will assure that the converting into a living space is the main thing that we're that they're not trying to do so i am okay with how it is written and with the conditions this is teresa it's my understanding that the whole purpose of the sun room was in fact to be a living uh, space and if you look at the in addition if you look at the photographs it includes um what appears to be a fireplace it it includes in its current state hardwood or french wood doors it includes two side doors for entrance and exit from the living space the sunroof sunroom living space into the yard on both sides and it also includes um, pre-wire um, from the photographs um, for electrical outlets on the walls um, it appears to include um, spaces for windows um, but they appear to be the type of windows you would see in a regular um, living space um, as opposed to uh, simply a screened sunroof. Um, so because of the original intent um, for this to be a living space and based on the current condition of what's been built out so far, it appears that this is intended to be a living space and is currently set up to be a living space. And I don't know how we would regulate that May, may I add to that? Um, I, I, don't, I don't see this as a patio under any conditions. That the walls are built um, and, and it, it won't take very much for, for this to be cooked and air conditioned. Um,
I comment further? I noticed uh, condition number two, the city has, our staff has suggested, it says the sunroom cannot be fitted with any plumbing or heating or air conditioning. Uh, I wonder if staff meant that they should also add on there, not fitted with electricity or if electricity would be okay for a, a covered patio. I know uh, my outside of the patio has an electrical outlet. It's where I hook up a whole lot of stuff. So. Uh, I'm not sure that the electrical, for me at least, would be any kind of a problem. This is Donald Dan, and uh, I would support the variance with the uh, recommended conditions. Um, to address the issue of um, electricity, the intent of the second condition was specifically for air conditioning and heating. And um, that it does not prevent the applicant from putting in electricity for a ceiling fan or lighting in the space. Thank you. And to, to add on to that, uh, electricity is often found outside of the residence uh, for a, a, a fan to be put in, uh, for lighting to be installed. Uh, so there, the, the need for electricity uh, isn't something that we're seeing as a condition of livability. May I add some more? Uh, technically, you don't need to add air conditioning to the room. You just need to extend the duct to it and it will be cool. So to me, it would be a living space. Um, that's the way I see it. Living space, no matter what. Lawrence, I think, Lawrence, I'm sorry. Did somebody say, want to say something? I did, Mr. Go Chairman. Ahead. I wanted to draw the board's attention to something, or at least get some feedback from everybody. My recollection was that one of the principal reasons in our discussion last year about this particular variance request was the or one of the primary issues was the encroachment on the easements. And those concerns have been uh, resolved now, I suppose, by the letters that the uh, applicant has obtained. Uh, my question is, when I looked up the new August amendment to the UDC, uh, the last sentence ends with that it is not encroaching on any easement. And, and my question is with, if we see any more of these cases where someone sees what we've done in this case and says, well, all I have to do to beat the easement issue is just go get a, a waiver of the utilities. Uh, I don't know if that's what the council meant in terms of their approving this last August. If they want to do away with, so to speak, allow a backdoor way to do away with the utility easement, simply by getting a waiver from whatever utilities and the city of Prairieland there might be. I don't know. They may have had some other issue in mind where they said, or what for a reason of why they said not encroaching on any easement. I don't have any, I don't think we have any guidance about what else the city had in mind, if anything. In other words, what's, what else might they have had in mind uh, to allow an encroachment upon an easement. Anybody else has got some thoughts on that. If you do it this one time, and I think I can make a case to distinguish this case from any others because of wild circumstances the applicants find themselves in, but you know, are we opening the door? And again, I support this variance because of all of these combination of circumstances. But at the same time, I wish we knew the city had said we can violate a utility easement mm -hmm. simply by getting a variance waiver or rather a utility easement waiver. That may not be enough in the minds of the city. I don't know. I may speak. Uh, the other issue is the, the, the encroachment to the, to the the, the setback from from fifty percent to sixty five percent. So that that's um, 
I'm having difficulty accepting that. It's, it's my understanding that even if this was not going to be a sunroom, that even if it was only a covered patio with um, a covered patio and the being held up in four places like you often see, that it still would not meet the requirements because it extends further than 50%. Um, so yeah, I agree with um, Mr. Acosta that it appears to go into the setback. So that, if I may explain, uh, I, the reduction, the UDC allows the 50% reduction as a given. Uh, the variance is to allow the additional 30% to get to uh, where the installation is currently in place. Uh, the, I think, and I, I'll phrase this and then uh, let legal respond, that the uh, normal 50% increase for a variance would probably take you uh, an additional five feet before you would be getting into uh, a further um, variance issue. Um, so that would take it from a 10 foot to a 15 foot rather than uh, what's currently proposed as a, a 13 foot one inch. Three feet, one inch. Three foot, one inch instead of five foot, yes, to, yeah. to keep apples and apples together. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not out of line by asking more time. I am say we won't discuss it, but um, are you, do you normally sign off on variances or, or you have input in all the variances that appear, I guess, would that be a true statement? My, my, I guess my question is, would you agree or disagree with the variance as it has been presented by the city? Okay, I missed the first part of your question. Okay. Would, would you agree or disagree with the variance as it has been presented by the city, the variance request, as it has been presented by staff earlier? And you may not be able to answer that. I don't want to put you in a bad spot if you can't, but would you, would you sign off on this? I agree with staff's presentation. That's, that's good enough for me. Thank you. Thank you. That's good enough. So Lawrence, I think that we've had um, the discussion unless somebody else wants to say anything because we can have a motion and then if we have any unreadiness, then we can have more discussion. But I think that we've had plenty of discussion now. Unless somebody else has to say anything, please, if you please address that. Okay. Um, I would like to adjourn this public hearing and move into consideration and possible action. Uh, would you, Gary, would you read the motion with the possible um, and the approval conditions? I will. Um, variance 20-0007 variance for enclosure of encroaching patio structure for sunroom. Uh, I make a motion to approve the request by John and Sheila Greenwald for a variance as permitted by the Unified Development Code to allow the closure of a 13 foot by 14 foot patio, which extends more than the maximum 50% 10 feet into the required rear yard setback in the R2 district to accommodate a sunroom. And as part of the variance approval in my motion, I move that the sunroom can only be used as approved and cannot at any point be converted into living space or a more intense use. The sunroom cannot be fitted with any plumbing or heating or air conditioning. 
the sunroom shall be substantially transparent, minimum of 50% on every facade exposed to the outdoors. So moved. To motion, is there a second? Second. To the motion and second. Any discussion? The motion and second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Nay. We have three approved, three yeses and two no's. So the motion fails. <laughs> So we would like to adjourn this meeting at 6.49 p.m. of July 2020. sent some paragraph or something for us for training about that amendment in August 2019. So, uh, so what uh, Mr. Shrum was discussing was a previous conversation where uh, he had requested that uh, future UDC amendments uh, get distributed to uh, the board members. Um, as that is not a posted discussion item, um, I will uh, send out an email uh, to the board members asking how uh, to better resolve that for future communications. Thank you, Thank you sir. Okay, uh, Lars, do we have anything from you or staff or anyone else? Florence? No. Uh, as there's nothing else on the agenda, uh, I believe it is up to you to adjourn the meeting. It's your list. Oh. oh, yeah, the meeting has meeting has been adjourned at uh, 649. Oh. Yes. <laughs>